So, uh, back when I was a senior in college, buying my suits for the very first time, uh, there was these things called on-campus on interviews. How many, have you guys done that? Like, you have that here in this building, where you get all dressed up in a suit and go shake some hands and tell people why they should hire you? Yeah? So, uh, so I did that, and I ended up really enjoying it. I had about 21 campus, on-campus interviews. I was just like applying to just the most random stuff, like you know, just being a sales dude, being a, an accountant, being a marketing guy, like whatever. I just really wanted to have as many interviews as possible, cast my net pretty wide. And what I learned through that whole experience is that, like, I really liked interviewing people. And the second thing I learned is that no one really had it figured out because I would go in and everyone's, you know. You know, fresh suit from Macy's or whatever, and sweaty palms, and I'd be chatting them up in the interview waiting room, and you're like, "Oh man, what are you interviewing for?" And they tell me, and like, is that really what you want to do? And they're like, "No, but you know, you gotta, you gotta do an interview somewhere." So, uh, so th those are the two things that I learned: is that no one really has it figured out at this stage in the game, and the second thing that I learned about myself is that I really like interviewing people. And my favorite part about the interview was that that end of the interview question of do you have any questions for us? And that portion is like what I live for in the interviews because I'd be like, all right, yeah, I've got plenty of questions for you. You know, like, how'd you get here? What, what, what do you enjoy about this? Like, you know, what's really cool about the company? Like, my interview portion would last longer than the interview itself about me. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what, this is something that's really cool. And, and the, the last interview that I was doing, um, I kind of like spaced out a little bit and like, and this sucks, this is the last interview I've, I've got to do. I've got, I had like one job offer out of the 21, great success ratio. <laughs> but I, but yeah, I was like kind of, kind of uh, disappointed that this is going to be like my last, you know, kind of interviewing experience before I you know, went off into, the, into my job or whatever. So uh, I went home that night, it was a January, uh, January night or whatever, and, and uh, got out of pen and paper and really like thought about what I wanted to do with my life after graduation and what I really wanted to accomplish, what I really liked doing. It's like one of those things where you sit in your room and you, you know, jot down the, the paper and everything. And so I wrote down um, before in like the next four months before I graduate, you know, I, I really want to work towards something that's significant that is like kind of entrepreneurial because that's, you know, definitely what, what I wanted to do is entrepreneurship and starting my own business and doing my own thing. And then I thought about you know, this job offer that I had was in September, which is like three months after I graduated. So with those three extra months that I had, what, what was I going to do? And so you know, I thought about like traveling would be sweet. You know, go, go travel around the country and, and uh, be a place that I've never been and use that last three months to, to do some cool stuff. Uh, I thought about interviewing people and like who would I want to interview and where would I want to go? And I started jotting down all of the people that I'd, I'd like to interview and like want to be like and want to learn from. And so, really, I was like, I have a, a great window of opportunity after I graduate, before I start that job, of three months to really figure it out and, you know, get an answer to that question of what I want to do with my life. Um, so, that, so, with that piece of paper, I basically came up with the idea to travel around the country and in an RV. <laughs> you know, interviews plus travel plus, you know, entrepreneurship equals this. Um, but yeah, I, I went into my, my roommate's room and I, I told him, I was like, dude, we should, we should travel around the country this summer and we should go interview some people you know, about why they like what, what they do for a living. And he's like, you're a little crazy, dude. Like, that doesn't sound like, like we can pull that off. And uh, I, I, I won't forget, like, he, he was listening. He had uh, those records. Like, he, he actually had a record player and like records. Um, I don't know how many college kids actually do that. But, uh, he had a Bob Marley record playing, and it was uh, Babylon by Bus. And on the back of this record label, it had the actual route that Bob Marley took on this like tour or whatever. And it started basically almost like where we were at in Arizona, and cruised all the way up through California, through Oregon, and, and into Canada. And uh, I was like, that's the route we're taking right there. Let's do it. <laughs> and so that was our master plan. And so I bought a, a domain name uh, called PursuitPassion.com. You know, started looking into like basically how I could line up these interviews and everything like that. And then the ultimate like big big go was buying this RV. And you know, I was scouting Craigslist for a while trying to figure figure out how I can like pony up like three grand and turn it into an RV. And this is what you get right here. And so I, I named it uh, I named it Maggie Miracles. And and we were you know I recruited one other buddy and we we're like set to hit the road. 
And so, uh, so lining up all these interviews was awesome. Like, um, you know, I basically had a dream list of places to go: Microsoft, Nike, Playboy, EA Sports, San Francisco Giants, San Diego Padres. Like, like some really cool stuff, you know. And uh, the very first interview that we did was with Lou Olson, head basketball coach at U of A. And so this is like, this is pretty big for a, a wildcat. You know, I, I, I don't know if it's like interviewing LT or something like that, but this was like. You know, look at, look at my buddy on your right hand side. Like, he looks like a little kid in a candy store. Like, <laughs> like interviewing Lou Olson, you know? So, this was like the coolest thing ever. Um, so, this was our first interview. We interviewed one other guy in Tucson who was like uh, a car dealer, but he was like pretty, you know, well off or whatever. Uh, we interviewed the namesake of our business school, uh, Carl Eller, who is like an outdoor advertising genius guy. Um, obviously, his name's on our business school, so he did something right. Um, and so we, we hit up those three interviews and then we hit up our little bad one by bus tour route, started cruising along, and something happened on the very first day that, that we were uh, cruising out and we ended up breaking down. So this is like three hours into the trip and <laughs> yeah, so it didn't plan for this, but we started driving and the, I don't know if you guys have ever driven like a really bad car, but times that by like 28 feet and you get RRD and it sounded like marbles like someone just threw a bag of marbles into the engine and it just like started you know doing bad stuff and spewing out green liquid or what whatnot we had to go like 35 miles an hour on the freeway for the rest of the time to San Diego which is like a seven hour drive it turned into like a 12 hour drive but uh Long story short, we didn't really uh, make it too far in the ZRP. We didn't make it uh, on, the, on the whole thing. We had to bomb uh, my mom's Toyota 4 and make it the rest of the way. But we ended up doing about 75 interviews this summer, which was pretty pretty cool. But then, uh, you know, reality kind of came, had to start working. So uh, this is actually a picture of me on my very first day. <laughs> Looking pretty pumped. Looking like, uh, you know. Almost like a couple of you guys when you walked in, I was like, man, three conference. No, no, just kidding. You guys all had smiles and looking good. But I, so back back the story up a little bit. I decided to major in accounting uh, when I was in business school. And the reason why I did that is having a conversation with my stepdad and I was talking to him about what I should major in. And he was an accountant, and he's like, Well, if you major in accounting, you're gonna get a lot of money and you'll have some job security. And I'm like, those two things sound good. So major in accounting, not really putting a whole a lot of thought into you know what I really wanted to do, what I was passionate about. And this is what happens when you don't put a whole lot of thought into something, and you know you kind of just let your environment take you in a, in a direction. Um, so I'm actually a firm believer that if you're not passionate about what you do for a living, you'll never be great at something. Like you might be really good at your job, but you'll never be like the best at it because you don't have like that extra ounce of that's pushing you forward and making you do great things. And so not only was I not even good as an auditor, I, I was I just suck. Like I was not good at my job, and uh, and, and it, it wasn't fun to, to be really bad at something like that, right? Like it's no fun to get up and go to work and just be like totally average. So um, so what I did was I, I was there for about ten months, and the whole time I was getting like these emails from people that were coming across our our website that was like, hey man, this is you know, pretty sweet what you're doing, let, let me know if you need a couch, you know, you're welcome to swim by any time or whatever. I'm like, all right, you know, put them in a little Excel spreadsheet, you know, for the for the back burner or whatever. I'm like, I'm going to hit you up, you know, seven months from now, you're going to get an email and be like, hey, remember that couch? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so one day I was actually, so as a corporate auditor, uh, basically the way it works is you audit, you know, people's financial statements and make sure they're in compliance or whatever. And uh, they take you to different companies uh, depending on like whatever month. So one month you might be at one company, another one you might, might be at another. And I was at this one company building that was like the worst. I mean, it, it smelled like burnt popcorn anytime you walked in there. Like 7 a.m., burnt popcorn, 12, like lunchtime, the worst burnt popcorn, and then like 3 p.m., you just wanted to get out of there. And, uh, and so I was at this, this place or whatever, and I was like, man, this job really sucks. I'm looking around, you know, or whatever, and uh, and so I'm on the tenth floor, and I have to walk down to the third floor to to uh, go ask you know someone a question, 
and no one ever wants an auditor like come in their office really like, excuse me, I have a couple questions for you. Uh, but you know that's that's what I was about to do. And instead of taking the elevator, took the steps so I could like drag it out and like, <laughs> walk it down. And uh, I, I get down to like the, the last you know step. And I'm like, man, this job sucks. I totally hate my job. And I said it out loud. And the person I was going to go meet was walking up the steps and she's like and she gets up there like the same time at the door and she's like well you know what maybe you should just quit and i'm like that's a good idea 